Hi, this video clip is on preparing files for printing and specifically we're going to prepare files that we'll send out to print for mounting on the ultra board self-adhesive mounts uh, 8 by 10 and 11 by 14 sizes. So we're going to be working in Lightroom. I think most of you that are going to be looking at this probably have Lightroom and uh, maybe not everybody has a copy of uh, Photoshop uh, uh, Photoshop uh, uh, either uh, version and uh, so what we want to do is to to assume that you have all of your of, of your adjustments made everything is made except the um, post crop vignette and so uh, if any time during this you want to kind of follow along that's fine if you hit tap your space bar I suspect it will put you on pause tap it again and you'll continue with the video so we're going to presume that everything has already been done except the post crop vignette and um, also um, hopefully you're using a raw file I happen to be using the Nikon.nef uh, raw file you may have Canon or, or Sony or one of the other kinds of raw files or if you've taken this into Nick or Topaz then you'll probably be looking at a TIFF file all those are great because they're 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 not a compressed type file. They're a, you know they're typically a raw file. They have all the data. If you're using a JPEG file, try to stick with the one that that came out of the camera. Make all your adjustments uh, on that one if you can. Uh, that is to say, all the adjustments on the file that has never been exported. If you have exported the JPEG, then you would have compressed it. You would have lost data, and then you if we start working on a file that's already lost some data then you save it again export it again then you're going to lose even more data and that's going to wind up resulting in a less than uh, less than good result for you so uh, if you can stick with raw files or full files without having been compressed into JPEGs and so um, so here we go what we're going to do first is an 8x10 so the 11x14 is exactly the same as 8x10 and so what we can do in Photoshop is is make the actual size of an image but we can't um, prepare it the way we want to. The way we want to is for full bleed that is to say just like this picture here there is no white border here but most printers are not going to be able to print right to the edge that is a full bleed what they wind up to be is an eighth inch of white border around it we want to not do that if we can avoid it so what we're going to have to do in order to the easiest way around it is to take and make an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 image which we're going to then paste or put on top of a larger white background image which would be for example in the case of an 8 by 10 would be the 11 by 14 we'll simply paste the 8 by 10 on top yeah it'll have a white border but it'll give us a line that we can cut later right along this line and our resultant image is going to be a full 8x10 without any white border on it. If you want a white border uh, you can work with JT and myself and, uh, and create one for you but for the purposes of this little video we're not going to we're not going to get into that. So let's go ahead and uh, and presume like I said all the adjustments have been made. Now when you see it on screen everything looks great everything looks fantastic that's what you want but you gotta realize that this is bright it's a light coming from almost like behind uh, the image and you've got ideal conditions for light once you print it and you put it on a wall those ideal conditions are gone and it's going to look darker it's going to look kinda dingy if you don't do something to compensate for the fact that you're not looking at them on a monitor anymore so what the solution is is to increase exposure we want to increase the exposure of whatever's here we want to increase it by at least 0.3 stops up to 0.6 stop so we'll be adding in the middle for example I know I already know mine is 0.45 so if I had 0.52 what I've already um, used to to put this picture in the position that I like so I'm going to add to that and that's going to make 2.25 so I'm just going to highlight it and go 2.25 all I've done is add 0.5 to whatever was there so now that has been done now we're ready to crop it so go get the crop tool 
And what we're going to do is go over here where it says original. We're going to click down and right here these are not dimensions. That doesn't mean 5 inches by 7 inches. That doesn't mean 4 inches by 5 inches. These are ratio. It means one horizontal to one vertical. That's a square. This one means uh, 8, for example, 8 uh, vertical to 10 horizontal. That's a ratio. So for the 8 by 10 we're going to select that one. So now I'm going to crop it. I don't, you know, it's the ratio, correct ratio, but it's not my correct crop. I'm going to take it down and make it look something more like this. And I'm going to say OK. Uh, because remember I, I said do everything except the, uh, except the post crop vignette. This is why. So I've cropped it down. Now we can go into the post, post crop vignette and um, go ahead and apply. And of course, this is, this is optional on your part. Go ahead and apply the vignette which I think that kind of looks okay. So we've got it cropped down to, to a ratio, ratio of 8 by 10 and we've got all of the, the editing done. We've brightened it to compensate for the fact that once we print it we don't have that light source behind it so to speak. So it's not going to be nice and bright. It's going to wind up to look dingy if we don't compensate. We added 0.45 to compensate. So now we're going to create the dimensions. We're going to make it so many inches by so many inches. In this case it's going to be 8 by 10. So in order to get to export, that's where we're going to do it in the export dialog. I simply right click and go to export. You can also do it on the menus up here where you, uh, where you go to uh, uh, get to export the same way. So we'll go to export. Dialog box comes up. I tend to put Anything other than when I when I go ahead and export something to a JPEG, I just I might I make a subfolder of the same original folder that my uh, image is in. It's it's you can do it any way you want to. It has nothing no bearing whatever on what we're doing, but that's just what I do. Rename uh, for this one I'm going to say eight by ten, eight by ten, test, and uh, go on down to here the file settings. Image format, we want JPEG. Color space, sRGB. Quality, 100. Uncheck this limit file size if it's checked. Okay, now we're going to go to the real fun stuff. Resize to fit. There's a drop down here. You could have percentage, megapixel, short edge, long edge, dimensions, height, and width. We're going to go with the dimensions. So what we want to do is we want to go here. We're going to put 8. And we're going to put 10. And of course, it's going to be inches, not pixels, not centimeters, but inches. Make sure that's checked. Resolution 300. Interesting to note, your monitor, even the best monitors, let's say you have an HD monitor with uh, a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. The number of pixels per inch you have is only about 80. 70 to 80, somewhere in that range, depending. So... 300 is way more detailed than what you're going to have even on your, on your best monitors. Even a 4K monitor does not have 300 pixels per inch. So uh, just realize that, uh, that it's really going to be a lot more detailed than what you see on screen. So anyway, just a little note there. 8 by 10, 300. Output sharpening, I usually do check when you, when you select glossy paper. You have screen, matte, or glossy. Obviously, we're going to select glossy because this will also cover luster paper. It covers glossy and luster, and those are the two kinds that you're typically going to get when you have uh, something printed. Those are the choices you get when you have something printed locally. You more than likely will not have a matte uh, choice, and that's probably not. You know, it's it's a it's a choice, but you won't have it locally if you print it someplace like Sam's. Um, the, the standard amount would just be, I mean, you could say low, standard, or high. The amount that they sharpen is not that much, so standard is okay, and that's about it. That's all you have to do. So now we say export. So now let's put that in a folder that, that I specified. So we've got, we've got the, the, uh, the size that we wanted. We have the, the um, we, we've changed the exposure. We've added some exposure to compensate, and we've, We've put it in the right ratio, 8 by 10 ratio, 
and then we added the dimensions. We said I wanted 8 by 10 in the ratio of 8 by 10. But so that one's done. Let's say we want to do 11 by 14. Everything is exactly the same, except now we're going to go back and do the same thing, except guess what? The ratio is now going to be 11 by 14. Now, uh, before this, none of these had 11 by 14 as a check option. So you go enter uh, a custom ratio, and again, you aspect ratio, you go 11 and put 14 here. And you say, OK, now it'll show up as one of your choices down here. It will now be your choice. So uh, if it's not here, then go ahead and put it in 11 by 14. Again, this is a ratio. Not This is not where you put the inches in. This is just the ratio. So um, I'm going to say that looks actually it looks pretty decent. I'm not going to do anything with that. Uh, I'm going to look at my uh, post crop vignette. And um, that actually looks pretty much the same as the other one. Um, oh, I didn't say I didn't say done. Sorry. Uh, so now we'll go with the post crop vignette and I'm going to go rip something like something like that is my post crop vignette. So now I'm ready to export it. So go right click and we go to export and we go to export. So everything in this dialog is going to be about the same. Uh, pretty much is just where it says 8 by 10. We're going to say 11 by 14, 11 by 14. And as we go down here, JPEG, sRGB, quality 100. Uh, and we're going to make sure that's not checked there. Resize to fit. And here we go with the fun part. We go 11 by 14. And our unit to measure is inches. Resolution 300. Sharpen for glossy. Say export. So. Now we've done dimensioned both of those uh, images. It's the same image, but one is now sized correctly 8 by 10. The other is sized correctly 11 by 14. So what we're going to do is go to Photoshop, and we're going to then place those two images on top of a, a white uh, blank picture that or page that is, in the case of 8 by 10, we're going to go to 11 by 14. So uh, I'm going to stop at this point, and I'm going to pick you up on the other side so we can continue in Photoshop. OK, we're in Photoshop now. We have our two images, 8 by 10, 11 by 14. 8 by 10, let's take a look and make sure that, um, that our image size is what we need. So we look at it, and sure enough, 8 by 10. And we look at the 11 by 14, and we go to image, image size, and it's 14, 11 by 14, which is very cool. Okay, so now what we want to do is on the 8 by 10 one, we're going to uh, put it on an 11, uh, 11 by 14 background. So we'll go to File, New, and uh, we're going to go to um, uh, the width is going to be well, it's already there, 11 by 14, and RGB color, um, white. So you have all these choices here, but what you want is just all that. So File, New, and you go to Custom, and you just put in the width, the height, and specify um, the color, and say OK. So there we go. We have one white. Um, one white image that's uh, 11 by 14. So we go back to this file. So you can highlight the, the, the file that's open. We want this one. We'll go to this one, and we'll go up here to the Move tool. Now you'll notice that I, I, I've moved my toolbar over here to the right, so all my stuff's on the right, and I have nothing on the left. It allows me to see the images better, but don't get confused. This is just plain old Photoshop CC. So my Move tool is there, and I grab this. What I'm going to do is just grab drag it up to this new white one. And then when it clicks like that, drag it back down, let it go. Now it, it has put it on there, but I'd like to center it. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be cutting it out anyway. So, But if I grab it and move it, you'll see that sooner or later, you see the little purple line that came up in the middle. Now if, if I go to the left there, 
that tells me I'm absolutely perfectly centered. I didn't really do much of anything. So that's it. That's it for that one. I will go to to File and Save As. I'm going to put it uh, in the same folder as I had. I'm going to change it to JPEG. And I'm going to call it the... Um, um, I, well, let me just uh, let me just call it something uh, uh, eight by ten uh, eight by ten spoonbill, and we'll say save. Say okay. So now we've done that one. So. What I want to do is to go to, to file. Let's click on, I want to keep this, this uh, actually I don't want to keep either one of them. So let's go to, uh, to file, close. You see we're on this one. So we'll say, do you want to, you want to save it? No. So let's go now to the 11 by 14. And the size, one size up from the 11 by 14 uh, picture is the 12 by 16. So we're going to make a, a new white one which is going to be File, New, and we've got Custom, so the width is going to be 16. The height is going to be 12. 12 by 16, white. Say OK. Same as before, now we'll take our 11 by 14. Got the Move tool still. Take and drag it up to the Untitled. When it, when it comes on like that, drag it back down and let it go. So again, we're going to move it until it hits the middle. Boom, the purple line comes on. Now I'll move it up and boom, purple line is there. So now I'm centered. So uh, actually, after I forgot to, to do something last time, what I'll do this time, I'm going to go layer, flatten image. So this moves, moves, instead of having two layers, it's just one, but it, for this purpose, it didn't really matter. So now I'm going to go save excuse me, save, save as, put in the same folder, and this time I'm going to also change it to JPEG, and I'll title this um, 11, excuse me, 11 by 14, and I, I like to include the dimensions in the in the file name just because it's easy to look at something and and, uh, and decide immediately what you're looking at. So say save and say OK. And that's pretty much it. So file, close all, no, no, no. So I'm going to close this out. That's really it. So your files are now ready to be sent to, um, sent out for, for processing to, to SAMS or somewhere like that. And uh, so that's it for this little video. I'm going to sign off now. Hope this helped you.